Hey everybody, it's Erin Reed from Erin Reed Makes and welcome to Card Making Wednesdays. Today we are going to be playing with stencils and some stencil butter from Crafters Workshop to make some really beautiful cards. So let me flip my thing back over here and welcome to the show. All right, Mike is working. Yay for lives. <laughs> so today we're going to be playing with some awesome stencils from Crafters Workshop. Let me flip the camera so you guys can see. Hello, hello, everybody who's gotten on. Um, we've got uh, some beautiful stencils that we're going to be playing with today. We're going to be making some slim lines and also some A2 size cards. But this particular slim line you could use for a variety of stencils and you could translate that to any size card you want, including mini slim line. All right, so let's get jump in and let me show you. We're going to start with this fun one first. So we're gonna be using the same stencil over and over, but we're gonna be changing up the colors on the stencil. Uh, so we're gonna have a different color as a background. I'm just gonna put down white paper. Um, whatever you wanna use as your background, I wanna be able to like get rid of my paper quickly while I'm videoing, so that's why I am not doing something different. Okay, meaning like you could do, put down a craft mat, you could have all stuff, but we're gonna be making lots of mess and just to switch between one stencil to another to another because we're playing with some mediums and stuff this is just a fast way to switch is by using copy paper so but if you've got a craft mat go ahead and use that okay so we have a stencil and i just want to show you kind of the baseline i just put a white sheet of paper down this stencil or this piece of paper is actually a bit bigger than we're going to cut it down but i want to make it larger so i can cut down where i want so this is the same stencil and i think i'm going to orientate it like this, which is what I did originally. Now, one thing I want to do to make sure my paper does not shift around on me is we're going to put a little bit of tape down first. There we go. It's just a tiny, tiny bit of tape. You could also do the corners. We're going to end up cutting a lot of this off, so don't worry about it. And then we're going to also tape down our stencil. So this stencil or this card actually has two layers to it. The first layer is we are going to stencil with ink. Hello, everybody who's on. We get so many amazing people. Quick shout out to everybody who's on today. We've got Darlene and Danielle and Lubo Mira. Hello, Teresa, Julie, Sarah, D, Don. Hello, hello. Just to name a few of the people that are on. So this is, you could use this with any stencil. Basically, we're going to do two separate layers with the same stencil. Uh, this first one I picked, of course, I put it away. I picked a really yummy aquamarine. You guys know that's one of my favorite colors. I picked that, stenciled that on first. But for this one, and I'm going to play. I'm not sure which one I want to go with yet. So that's why I pulled out both colors. And of course, my blending brush has up and vanished on me. I had everything right here. Where did it go? Stupid brush. <laughs> I probably fell somewhere. Okay. I had everything, like, like everything was right here. And now the brush has up and walked away on me. Ah, oh, bummer. That is my only purple one too. Okay, well, I'll just have to make shift with a different one. Uh, you can see this is where I keep all my stencil brushes. All right, and the purple one's missing. My nice big purple is not there. So we're gonna make shift with blue because this is, I already have a blue. So we're gonna shift to a blue. And just so I know this is purple and not blue, I'm gonna pop on these little things right here. So these are from Make It by Marco, I love them. You can attach them to any blending brush and therefore that way I know this is purple. And it's just a way to kind of know what color I'm working with. So even though the color, usually like the color of the actual stencils, it's in a safe place, it totally is in a safe place, right? Um, so it's kind of strange, um, but usually the color of the stencil or the blending brush is the color, but since I had two blues and I already used the one purple for something else, so that's how you can mark them for different colors. So they're really, really awesome. So I'm just going to test this on the side of the copy paper just to see which one I like better. That's pretty. And I'm matching it. So I'm trying to match it with the purple that's on here. So that's a little bit too grapey. Maybe this one is too. Maybe I have to get a different background. I think I'm gonna go for this one, which is grape slush, just because I like the color tones of that better. So the first step is ink your paper. Blend up, create a color, 
and any color you want. That's the beautiful thing about this. There's no wrong way to do this. You can do it in any color you like. I'm going to tape this down a little bit more because I feel like it's just a tad bit wonky. Like it's not, it's moving around too much on me. So I'm going to tape right there. I think that'll help. This is the look we're going for. Let's get the rest of the other stuff out of the way. I have my My camera is up a little higher because I want to show you all the fun stuff we're doing. So usually I go a little further away. My daughter is now standing next to me looking at me. Oh, she wants to make something. Okay, you can make that. All right, so ink the whole thing. You can go as light or dark as you want. If you really want really, really heavy, heavy, heavy pigment, then just go darker. If you want to have some lighter spots, you could do that. It's your card. Do it as you wish. Keep in mind, like I can see where the card is cutting off, so I don't want to go too far out. This particular stencil is one of the newer ones from Crafters Workshop. It's then one of the new releases. It's really fun. You can use it for a ton of different things. I love it for this particular project we're doing today. <laughs> this offset, which is really fun. All right, got to get all the ink on here. Almost there, almost there. And then it goes really fast. I promise. I promise. So hopefully everybody's having a wonderful day. My boys are going to a fun event tonight. They are going to, at our rec center, our community rec center, they have a intro to Dungeons and Dragons. And so both my boys get to go and it's, they have pizza and they're going to be building characters. And there's, they have them every Wednesday, once a month on Wednesdays. I think it's once a month that they do this. All right. So don't want to completely lose this. I just want to see, do I like the coverage? So I'm doing a sneaky peek. And oh yeah, isn't that pretty? That is awesome. Look how gorgeous that is. So pretty. And that would be a gorgeous card all to itself, just stenciling that on there. And you could mat that. It would be a singular color. But we're going to offset this and create another layer of color. So with the same stencil, all we're going to do is I'm going to line this up where it was. So here it is, right? Let me get it on there. There we go. So there is, that's where it was. We're going to shift it just a little bit. Don't go too crazy. But see how it's just shifted just a tiny bit? So we're going to create a shadow effect. Now, you could create a shadow effect and you could go a lot of different fun colors. We're going to pick the stencil butter in platinum. Just to, You could do a white. You could do just with gesso. We're creating that kind of fun stencil, but I like that color of that silver. I love silver. You could go with a gold or maybe, well, you tell me. Should we either do gold with purple or silver with purple? You guys tell me what you think. I got to get my stuff out. So you guys decide. They're both right here. here. I'll put the colors. Shout out what you want. Do you want to do gold with purple or silver with purple? I did silver with the, the turquoise here. So shout out what you want while I grab my stencil brush or my palette knife. Okay, we got one gold and one silver. Got to have a tiebreaker. Next one that calls out. Okay, we got three silver. Silver's the winner. <laughs> silver is the winner. But you know what? You could always play with it. Well, we still have more silver than gold. <laughs> play with it on your own and decide what you want to do for yourself, okay? All right, so now we're going to take just a tiny bit. We don't need to overkill. I'm actually going to put it on the back side. Put it on the back side here. We don't need to go crazy, crazy, crazy. And this is where the next layer is coming from. I don't want to over apply, but I want to apply enough. And this is a little bit of a different silver. This is a new product. Just as a heads up, this is a little bit of a different product than what I'm using. It's going to be released very, very, very soon. If you saw in Creativation, um, that's the other product. I'm not going to give too many hints because it's not released yet, but I will say it will be released in July. It has something to do with Stardust in the name, I will say, but you could use this technique with this too. I like this one a little bit better just being honest, because it's got a little bit of transparency. This is going to be a lot more solid. Not really happy with this choice of stencil knife because it's getting too small. <laughs> I need a thicker one. <laughs> but you could go darker. You could go lighter. You could also do a white, gold, all kinds of fun. It's just offsetting it, creating that little bit of a change in the, sh the shade of it, right? And then putting that on all over. Getting all those little nooks and crannies. You could even do two tones. You could do 
um, like a purple, and then the paste could be a blue. There's so many ways that you could do it. No wrong way. And I'm curious to see, because I used the other one on this one, how different it's looking, because this is a much, this is not so transparent. The, the, the Stardust is a lot more of a transparent paste, whereas this is, what's the opposite of transparent? Opaque? That's right. That's the word, opaque. All right. So we're really going to get a good shadow effect. I'm just scraping to make sure I get all the excess off and making sure I've hit every little nook and cranny in here. There we go. All right. So now the silver is on there. I like silver with cool colors and gold. I am the same way, Don. I love, I'm, I'm absolutely 100% uh, <laughs> on board with that. But I also know that silver or that gold and um, purple would work really pretty together. Okay, now it's time for the big reveal. Are we ready? Are we ready? And there it is. It's that little hint of that purple. This time we went more silver. This is, again, two different products, but the same concept of how I did that. And then I'm going to take my stencil because it's got all this yumminess on it right now, and I don't want it to sit. Take the tape off, and I just want to show you. I have a tub of water right here, and I just rest my stencil inside of this. I kind of give it a good zhuzh right away. And because it's resting in the water, and these are all water-based paints, um, mediums, whatever you want to call them, you can already see that it's starting to kind of pull up, and it's starting to like not sit on the stencil and it'll make my stencil cleaning easier because I'm not going to get to it right, right away. So we're just going to shift that over to there. And then let's do the next big reveal because let's pull it off the background. And then I have a mat. So we're not going to finish building the card, but it's pretty straightforward. We're going to do the other stenciling and letting those dry for a little bit, but it's pretty basic. We're going to add a mat to the back of that and then a little stamp in the corner and let the stencil shine. That's why I love the white space on this because it gives you a space to actually stamp something. And I always like going a little bigger on my stenciling than too small, because then I can cut off any boo-boos that I have. So just take a look at that. Isn't that pretty? And you can see like the layers of the colors that are in there. And it's just that, that little, little hint of that purple in the back. And it's right there, but any color, you could pick any color you want as to go into the background of that. Okay, so we're gonna let this sit. I'm going to throw, this is why I have this, so I can throw away my, my yuck paper. I have a little paper off to the background here. And then let's move on to the next one. Okay, so the next one we're going to do is this pretty, pretty one. So this is another stencil. Let me grab some more copy paper. Forgot to grab some extras. Of course, it all wants to stick together. Again, it just makes cleaning up easy. So for this one, any questions so far? We're good, we're good. Purple and gold are majestic. Yes, it's the very majestic. I mean... It's when it comes to making your cards, here's the beautiful thing. Try different colors. See what happens. See what happens when you mix it and you put this color with that color. See how different it looks. And you will just be amazed about how just changing one little color, going lighter or darker, or doing a complementary color or a secondary color to that, or mixing instead of gold, you do silver or something like that. It is a totally different look of a card, even though it's the exact same technique. So just have fun and just play. You never know what you might like. So enjoy. Okay, so here we have the next one. This time we're going to work with a black sheet of paper, and that's got a little spot on it, so we're going to flip it over. Again, we're going to tape this down. Tape is your friend so things don't shift around and move on you. So just a couple of pieces of tape just so it doesn't wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. All right, and in this card, I did cool tones. So we're going to flip it and we're going to do warm tones this time around. So I have my beautiful stencil right here. This is a really cool stencil. It's got this very geometric pattern to the whole thing. And the colors that we're going to be playing with on this one are these three. You could pick anything. Just to show you, there's a ton of colors. We use the gold. Um, on this card, I use the purple so it's not really purple, sorry. It's called Orchid. I use turquoise. And then I used the ocean blue. So these three colors went on this card, but we're going to use very warm tones with this. And so it's really kind of fun to play with that. Um, you can also just see some of the other colors that are available in the stencil butters. There's a wide variety. So you can really play around with it and have a ton of fun. Um, the last stencil to do... Sorry, what were you asking? 
There's a question about the last stencil, and I'm trying to understand. You said the last technique, the last stencil. Um, what is the name of the stencil? The name of the stencil we just used, the one with kind of looks like flowers, but also could be like water splotches or whatever you want to call it. That one's called petal splash. So yeah, it kind of hits the petals, but water, it could kind of go either way. So it's called petal splash. And so that's a six by six. I did link all of the supplies down below. You can find all the stencils we're using at Crafters Workshop and also at scrapbook.com. I linked the scrapbook.com. So they're all, all posted below for you. Hopefully that was the question you were asking. This one we are playing with right now is called, not Slimline Lavender. That's the one we're going to do in a minute. Hang on, got to find the thingy. Of course, I stuck them all here. Ah, here it is. This one is called Slimline Circular Rings. It makes sense, right? <laughs> so hopefully that answered your questions. Um, oh, did I shift the stencil? Is that what you're asking? Yes. So just looking right here. So what I did for the for this last technique is I inked the stencil with the ink. Then I shifted the stencil over just a little bit. And I kind of went up and to the right. So I shifted it a little bit. And then I went in with the other color. So it's just a tiny bit of a shift. So you can see the purple behind, but it's not like this massive shift. So it's just a little bit of a, just a, like a couple of millimeters, maybe a centimeter, not even, not even a centimeter, but just a tiny bit of one. All right, this one is no shifting. This one is just color blending, but using a really geometric pattern here and having fun with the geometric pattern. So there's a lot of them that are out there. They're so pretty. And whatever floats your boat is what you want to go with. So that's totally fine. This one I did three colors just to show you. This one is just plain old silver on the black. So you could do the exact same idea. So it's just one color on this one. For this one, we're going to use three warm colors just to kind of play because why not? I'm going to use a different palette knife because I was not happy with the last one I used. I like an offset palette knife. I like ones like this. And the one I just used was not my friend. <laughs> I didn't personally like it. And I put it down and I don't know where I stuck it. That's not good. Oh, there it is. It's stuck on paper. So you can also take your old palette knives and you can put them in your water as well. So that way they don't get yucky and sticky and gross. So because I just had it on the back of a piece of paper that's all nasty now. So glad I was looking for that. Okay, so let's open up our three colors. I'm going to do... Try and decide which order I want to. I think I want to do red, then orange, and then yellow. And I know that's not what they're called, but you know, you get the idea. Red, orange, yellow. Um, <laughs> sorry, just reading the comments. Yes, it's cool colors, but these are warm colors, so it's 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 a little different, right? Okay, let's start with our first one. And I had a little bit of some extra paint in there or some extra stuff. This stencil butter is so yummy and it's so creamy and it's just so easy to apply. So I'm going to put the first one on. I'm just going to go across the top. Any color tones you want to do, you want to do a singular color tone. You want to do a full rainbow. No wrong way to do this. This one's, I'm not a big fan of this palette knife either. Man, I keep pulling ones. I'm not, I think I pull all the ones I liked because it's for the next technique and I need a couple of them. Go figure. All right. So I did about the top third. And then I'm just going to do a quick little cleanup so I don't get too much of the paint color. So just a little cleanup on some paper towels. I'm going to go in with this one is called Marigold. Appropriately fitting. If they blend a little bit right here, I love that five. I love it. Get the second half in here. And this is why I put a sheet of paper. You want to, you know, whatever you need to. To kind of clean up and then I didn't do a very good job of scraping off the first layer so we're going to do that and I have lots left over unfortunately so I'm just going to put it right there I always put two I try not to put too much on but inevitably I do let's put the red right there you want to keep all the yummy goodness in the future you are more than welcome to do so because there's nothing wrong with all that goodness that I just wiped off onto the side Clean off my spatula again. Oops, of course I put it down with the paint. This is why you have a nice craft mat or a craft table that you can clean really well. And the last color we're going to go into with is the yellow. Not to overdo. I might not have done as much into the, the uh, orange, but I can always come back because I left the orange on the, on the table here. And I can add, because I feel like I did too much of the yellow. But, you know, it's just, it's by sight. There's no wrong or right way to do this. 
So you could do this technique with any kind of what I would call geometric pattern stencil. I think it looks really cool. I love how it's kind of spiralized it is. And if you've got six by six stencils, just break it up. That one you could do, as again, one color, many color. Let the stencil do all the hard work. I'm gonna grab some more of the orange and come in right here. There we go. And if there's a few little colors that come in, like see, I'm kind of pulling, you know, and if I come up here and I pull a little bit of color, nothing wrong with that. So just do one last swipe, make sure I've got all my color off. Again, if they kind of blend together a little bit, totally fine. This is where neat and pretty, and I always want to cap these when I'm done so I don't get them gross and I don't, you know, accidentally knock them, get something into that. You do one final over the whole thing and put another background. Yes. So you, if you wanted to, and I actually have another sheet of paper here that I cut or I thought I did. So it would pull off some of the, in, uh, some of the stuff that's there, but you could put another sheet of paper. I'm not going to on this one because I don't have one ready and I'd have to do a little bit more apply. Um, and truthfully, there's a little, I'm using my finger right now. I'm just seeing a couple little holes. It's not bad. There was just a couple little spots that I felt like had a gap in them. And so now the big reveal, I always love the reveal. I just always think it's so much fun. So you can really kind of have fun with your colors here, but the reveal is so cool. Okay. I got to get my fingernail underneath there. Ready? Oh, grabbing Jimmy. I'm having a hard time. There we go. Look at that on that black. Look how stunning that is, right? Um, do you have the big wide spreader? I have about five different stencils going on right now, partly for different things. And so, um, do I have a big wide one? I have a couple of them like that, but one of them is in use for a product technique we're going to do in a minute. So look how cool that is. I love it. So now we got to let this dry. I love the starkness on the black. We always go for white, but I love how it looks on a sheet of black paper. I think it has that stunning effect. It just has a kind of a different vibe to it. There we go. And then let's pull this off. And again, I'm just going to throw away the sheet of paper because I don't need it right anymore. And I always go a little bit bigger because we're going to cut down exactly what we need. So if I made any boo-boos, we can always trim this off. And it just gives me a little bit of something. So isn't that really cool on the black? So same technique. This one I use cool colors. These ones are warm tones. Same concept. And now this, if you want to save the yumminess for later, you're more than welcome to do so. Put that off to the side to let it dry. But just to kind of go over how that would then finish, trim that off. In the center, I just put a beautiful little hello and then just let it be. So there's not, you know, anything need. Um, you need some of those Simon Hurley scrapers. I have a lot of different kinds of scrapers. Again, I've got quite a few in, in action to going on today. So here we have our last one. This one is actually, instead of just using a geometric pattern or using a different kind of pattern, we're also going to mute our tones. So we're going to use the same stencil. So we have this beautiful stencil here. Let me get another sheet of paper. There we go. And I'm going to show you, we're going to build one more color on this. I only did two tones on this, but we're going to build one more because I felt it needed green for the greenery on here. So lay that down. Let's add our tape again. Do, do, do. There we go. So again, it went much bigger on my piece of paper just to make sure I could always trim it off later. Place my stencil this time. Let's do the bow on the other side. So I kind of cut my paper to be almost as big as the stencil. The stencils are four by nine, but the actual size of the image is much smaller than that. So it trims down because you see there's a bunch of extra space for the stencil here. So get that on here. So now that's all set. And then I took these two colors. And if you notice, the color that's in here is a very different shade, right? It's not the same shade. So I was thinking it's lavender. I don't want to have lavender be like in your face. And I don't want the blue to be super, super dark blue. So how can I drop that down? So I just grabbed some modeling paste, whatever modeling paste, white gesso, but anything along those lines. This is why I have all my palette knives are all busy. Okay, so I'm just going to stir this up. I'm going to take a nice big blob. I'm going to go too crazy. And I can use that palette knife or I can use a different one for, for this next step. Plus, I didn't have time, you know, because we're live and we're doing lots of different colors here and lots of different techniques. I didn't want to be constantly cleaning products in between. So I'm, I'm using all my different palette knives that I have today. <laughs> and then we're going to pick this pretty color. This one is 
uh, terra verte, and we're going to add a little bit of that to it. So we're going to tone it down. I don't want to grab too much, so just a little bit. So this is where another palette knife is coming into play. There, just a little dab. I'm going to put this on top of here in case I need to add more. And this is how I can kind of pare down. Whoops. There we go. This is how I can kind of pare down the color. You know, it's this is color theory. You can add tones to this. The other thing about stencil butter, it's got a little bit of a shine. So since I'm adding it to some modeling paste, it's kind of toning down the shininess of it. And it still has that beautiful thickness. So look at that. Isn't that a pretty color right there? That's gorgeous. So you can take this and you can get a lot more tones by just adding some modeling paste to it. And then you can always blend colors together. You don't have to go straight from the jar. You can have some fun with it. It's, think of it like paint because it's really pretty like paint. So look at that. Isn't that pretty? All right, so now we're going to start applying. I'm going to do the purple up at the top. This has been sitting for a little while since I made it this morning, so it's starting to thicken up, but I try to plop it on as much as thick together so it wouldn't be a problem. And I'm not going for perfection here. So we're going to go towards the top and just hit every single... There we go. I just have this on some wax paper. <laughs> it's actually some transfer paper that was left over from when I did my live. It was sitting in my trash. I'm like, that would be a perfect little palette thing that I could just throw away when I'm done. Okay, so here I'm hitting, trying to get all my flowers as best as I can. There we go. And whatever color's on top when you're stenciling is the color that you're gonna see. So if you go over it with another color, that color is gonna supersede it. All right, so pull that off to the side. Now I'm gonna come in with the green I just made and hit the green. And if I go over a little bit of the purple, it's totally fine. Don't worry about that. I am not gonna try and go in and do those stems because that would just be a pain in the tuchus. It's too hard to get in and do all those little bitty sections but you could if you wanted to. You could totally try to accomplish that. And because I've got such, you know, so many different colors going on here, it's okay to leave it on thick and goopy. You don't have to go super, um, you don't have to scrape it off. Now, the thicker it is, the longer it's gonna take to dry. And I don't know if I'm gonna be able to finish all the cards with you because of the drying time, but at least I'm showing you guys the technique. I could pull out my heat gun, but then it starts kind of bubbling and stuff. So I'm just going to try and pull off as much as I can. There we go. And then because I got a little bit of the purple in there, I'm going to come back with my purple and just kind of scrape over the purple. Try and get that to be the color that's on top. And I'm going to clean off this palette knife again because I want to use, actually, I could probably just do this. Look at, look at the difference in the color from where we started to when we blended it. So different. There is a lot of good tools out there, guys. And it's whatever you are comfortable, whatever you like, whatever you're, whatever is ringing your bell. And there's a lot of really cheap tools out there. I mean, these are all from, sorry, I got paint on here enough. Otherwise, I'm going to like scooch my product into there, my project, I should say. So whatever you're liking... Just doing a quickie pull off again. So I've got less, the less product on here, the faster it's going to dry. So whatever you are comfortable using, and these are just plastic palette knives I'm using. Some people like sponges. There's, you could use like the makeup sponges. Some people love those. It's whatever you like. And here's my other big thing for you. Take a look to see what you can find on Amazon because nine times out of 10, you're probably going to find almost the identical kind of tool for half or quarter of the price just because it doesn't have that brand name on it. So still buy the designs that designers do, the stencils that they make, the stamps that they do, but a tool, that's where they're getting them from too. So just a heads up. <laughs> just putting that out there. It's a lot cheaper. All right, now we're going to do the water. And I'm doing the whole thing in blue, except for the bow. I'm going to try it. And so I'm trying to do more colors on this one now, layering up the colors and just having some fun playing with. And I may not get it all the way. You know what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go through and do the whole thing and then layer over top with the purple because I want the bow to be the purple color. But first, I can do the whole thing so that I'm not missing any sections here. So, and there's some more people have gotten on. Hello, hello, hello. 
How is everybody doing today? Hope everybody is doing wonderfully. All right, so pull off some of that awesome paint. Let's scrape the rest of this off. It's starting to thicken up on me because I've left this sit in the air for a little while. So it's not as easy to prep. I mean, it's still fine. It's still working wonderfully. But normally, like my the green one I made is much easier to pull. There we go. Now I'm going to go back to the purple. And I'm going to add some purple where the bow is. And again, I don't need to be perfect. I'm just trying to mimic the idea of this is a little bow. And I can kind of look on here that the bow is hitting in this space. Do, do, do. It's gooped up on the tip of that one. Do you guys like playing with stencils and paste? Because I think it's fun. It's like such an easy way to do a pretty picture without having to work so hard for it. There it's. And I'm going to go in with that other one that I had and just pull away and then pull down. And again, it's okay if it kind of crosses over and gets a little bit from one color into the other. That's the beauty of it. And then I just got a little bit of extra blue. I'm going to come in here because I got it in like the main water spot. There we go. And then that's it. Now we're going to pull it off. Now we're going to see the, the, the yumminess that is left. And look at that. See, we got three tones going on now with a little bit going on with the bow. And then all you need to do is let that dry. Again, I'm gonna pull the tape off of this and then pop this into my water bath. All of my paint palettes, this is starting, like I normally I was like, oh, well, let's do another card and let's get more done. But at this point I'm done with this. So I'm just gonna put all of the paint in here, which is my water bath I got going on here. And it's starting to get all kinds of pretty colors. Try and scrape off what I can. There's a lot of paint on this guy but it'll just make cleaning up so much easier if you get it wet. And then doing it on like a little sheet of paper like this, I can just fold this over and I can get rid of it. Again, if you were doing a lot of different projects and you were kind of mass producing, you would definitely want to keep those for future and like keep those paints. Like I did a couple of different cards. You could probably get three or four more cards out of that. Um, but just because we're live, I got to clean up as I go so I don't accidentally put something inside of something and make a mess out of it. All right, so let's go back and take a look at our very first card and see where we are in terms of drying time. So pretty, I'm gonna swap these and throw away the outside paper. Let's see if any of these are dry enough to show you. So this shouldn't take too long to dry because it's fairly thin. Oh, I love, thank you so much. You like all the cards I make. Well, thank you, I appreciate that. <laughs> I try, I try. Okay, so this was the first one we did where we offset it. And it is, it's not quite there. So let's pull out the heat gun just to do a quickie. That way we can finish it. And I got to remember what drawer I keep my heat tool in. It's always like magical drawers down here to just, oh, there it is. I feel like I got a bajillion of them. And then the, the more I work with this one, then we'll get to work with the next one. Hopefully my heat tool is not too loud. And then I just want to hold the paper so it doesn't fly away on me. Hopefully this is not too terribly loud for you guys. All right, let's see where that's at. And just to show you the other version of the same card, this is the same one. Let's zoom in a little bit so you guys, and I got to refocus here. So bear with me while I autofocus again. There we go. Now you can really start seeing. Let's get that off the screen there. Okay, the paste I'm using is the stencil butter from Crafters Workshop. This is awesome. So remember we went back and we used the purple. We ink blended the purple with the stencil, pulled the stencil off, shifted it over just a tiny, tiny bit. And then we went back in with the stencil butter in platinum. And so that was the change in color. This is the same technique, except I used turquoise, shifted it over. And then let's see how dry we are. We are good to go. Look at that. It's good. So just a tiny, you can let it air dry, but just a tiny little hint and you are good to go. So now we need to trim this up. 
This is why I always go a little bit bigger. I know I want to keep, I got a little smudge, but I know I want to keep a space up here. So I'm just going to trim a tiny bit of that smudge off. There we go. And I want to make my card to be three quarters of an inch because I want to put a mat on it. So yeah, some of the, what we're doing is going to get cut off. And if you are into journaling or into any of those things, you could totally keep these strips and these will be awesome in some of your journaling or for ATCs or any other fun stuff. So it'd be really cool. Um, is there any other questions? Uh, Mist being, what stencil is that? Okay, so I use three different stencils just to show you. So the stencil that I used here, this one is called, and of course I put the package away. Um, oh, here they all are. So this stencil, which is already in the wash, but you can see the design of it. That one is called Petal Splash. The stencil, this one right here, which is the card we did at the end, that one is called Lavender in a Jar. And then the second card we did, which we're going to get to when it dries, that one is called Slimline Circular Ring. So those are the three stencils we are playing with today. Very different kinds of stencils. Tried to, to show you three very completely different ones. Links are down below to go to scrapbook.com and it has all the amazing stencils that Crafters Workshop has. So we've cut this down so we can mat it because we're going to mat it onto purple because we've got a purple background. We're going to mat it onto the purple. So now I've got side to side and then I need to cut it down so it fits and it's got to be five inches. So I'm going to go a little bit from the bottom and then a little bit from the top. And this is where you can kind of play around with it. There we go. So now I've got my cut piece and you don't want to do any of the cutting until you know you're hundred percent dry, but again, keep some of these yummy pieces for your ATCs and things like that. Cause they're just, they're cool. Right. All right. I got to put my paper trimmer away so it doesn't touch anything and get gross. All right. So now we're going to put our stamp on here. So let's pull our stamp. They have some really pretty stamps. Crafters Workshop decided to come up with some gorgeous stamps. So we're going to play with one of them today. I'm using the same sentiment. It says, let your dreams come true. And it's called the Beautiful Sentiments Stamp. And it's got these gorgeous butterflies on it. Again, they're over there. An ATC, ooh, an ATC is a beautiful little, it's the size of a playing card, like um, a baseball card or like playing cards. And again, my screen is doing something wonky. Sorry about that. Um, so it's a nice and small. It's about a three by four. And it's a small little piece of artwork that you can do just to practice and play around with getting your art done. It's something you can trade. So it's called an artist train, trading card. So just inking this up. I love the size of this little stamp because I thought it fit perfectly in that space. Hence, I liked all the white space. If you had more white space, you could definitely um, do a bigger stamp in that in that space, depending on how much. If I shifted everything down and had less of the stencil, you could get away with a bigger stamp there. Or you could do more space at the bottom and have your stamp at the bottom. There's no wrong way to do it. I'm just going to leave the stamp in there for now. Well, I'll put it away later. Got to remember that I left the stamp in there, <laughs> which I'm probably going to forget, but it's okay. I got some more work to do after this. I got to create some short videos. All right. So now we're going to layer this on there. I feel like those are pretty close to colors. So if you've never looked up ATCs, it's a really fun project. I don't want to flip this over. I don't want to smash it. It's dry. I just don't want to smash my, my elements here. So that's why I'm not flipping this over. Normally I would add the paper, the, the adhesive to the paper itself. But look at that. Look at the shine on that. And you can see that hint of that purple in there. It's just so cool. In person, it's even more amazing. You can really see the purple in the background right now. I think the, the camera is picking up all the shine, but it's just cool. And then let this sit on there. But yeah, look up ATCs. It's, it's a really fun technique to me. It's like it's, it's a much smaller way of playing with fun ideas. And then you can trade them with other artists. But look at that. Isn't that pretty? So here are the two versions of the same card in two different colors. There we go. And same concept, same, but look how different they are. Um, this one is in the silver. This one is in the product that is going to be coming next month. And I'll have some more videos on that, short videos coming in July on that. So hence Stardust, but I can't release it yet. I can't show you all the fun stuff about that yet. Next month, next month, it's coming, it's coming, but you'll see. So when you see a version of this card coming, you'll understand. All right, so now let's check how our 
spiralized one is doing. So I'm just going to test over here. Oh, it's not even close. It's still very goopy. So we're going to oop, <laughs> and heat set and get this to be dry. Hopefully this heat is not too loud on the camera. So if you love the bubble effect, which I'm getting a little bit of it, go for it, let it do its thing. If you're not a fan of the bubble effect, then let it air dry. For this, because we're on camera, I've got to give it a little bit more time. It's too hard to let it dry live, which is why I always have a done card for you, especially when we're dealing with stuff like this. It just takes a little longer. but I love getting that bubbly effect. It's just, it's another texture on here. And this is just all about textures and pretty colors. Can you guys even hear me as I'm heat setting this? I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know how loud the heat, the heat tool is while I'm doing it. And we got some more people that came on. Hello, Kentucky Crafter. Hello, hello. All right, I'm just really going for the bubbly effect now since I got it going. Let's see where we're at. Ta-da! Amazing what a little bit of heat will do. Okay, I know I didn't heat set the side of that, so I'm going to just very quickly... Well, actually, no, I don't want to do that. I got for the most part. I'm just going to take my paper towel and just run along the edge because we're going to put this in my paper trimmer again. I don't want to get my paper trimmer all gunky. You can hear me. Isn't that look like this fire graph? I love it. It's like the concentric circles. It's so pretty. It is tons of fun. All right, so we got to get... And again, we're going to trim this down. The size of the slimline cards that I picked is one where it's eight and a half. So using a normal sheet of paper. And then I cut to seven inches. And you fold it in half and this becomes a three and a half by eight and a half. That's just one version of a slimline card. There are so many sizes that are out there. So I want to do this as a direct mat. So I need to cut this down to be three and a quarter by eight and a quarter. So I'm just going to start by cutting off the gunk. And then we'll decide from there. So three and a quarter cuts me. Well, let's get rid of the gunk. Make sure I cut straight. So whenever, make sure I go straight up against the edge here. So we'll do the side first. So if I went to three and a quarter with all that, I'm cutting right in the middle. So let's go to the edge. And I know I got plenty of room here and it should just cut nicely. I'm not doing a mat on this. I'm just trimming it down and we'll go a little bit bigger. It's okay if I'm a little off. So I've just basically cut down the sides and then eight and a quarter. So let's see, I'm gonna go to the edge here and pull out the arm on this, which is lovely. And eight and a quarter hits look right there. So basically when I trim this down, it's pretty much the three and a quarter by eight and a quarter that I need to have or that I want to have, which is nice. All right. So then all I'm going to do is I'm going to mat it. I got gunky on my card and I'm going to mat it to my card. And you could do whatever card base. If you wanted to pick a color that was in this, I just decided to stick with white because my sentiment that I'm going to use is white. We'll know for sure if this is really dry because I just turned it over. Look at that. Oh, one little spot. That's not bad. A couple spots. Some of the, the orange didn't quite set. And then mat this on here. Now, the cool thing about this card, and let me clean up those little oopsies real fast because I got some orange on my desk, is you could decide to go either direction with it. So you could either decide to go this way or you could choose to have your card go that way. There's no wrong way with this card because it does go both directions. The first card I did, I went vertical. So let's change it up and let's go horizontal or do you guys wanna go vertical? I'll show you the difference. So I cut out just the little words, hello. I'm gonna put the white on top because if you put the black, it just hides, right? Even on top of here, get off, move over. It still hides, you can barely see it, which is kind of a cool idea, but 
I want it to pop. Plus, it's tying in with the white that's in the back of the card already. So we just did a little shadow effect. So you can come in and you can shadow. And I like the idea like it's right in the center because it's really like the hello is spiralizing from the center. I was also playing with the idea, do I want it down here? I know I left the, the other one there, but you could also put it in the corner. But because this has such a beautiful center, I really wanted everything to kind of radiate from that. So it's like that main center. So I'm not going to go ahead and put all these through here. Put some backwards so I don't waste as much stuff. This is a little sticker maker from Zyron. It's so awesome. It turns everything into a sticker. I don't have to worry about pulling out weird glues and all that kind of fun stuff. You guys see me? I make this all the time. There's more paint on my desk. I got a big cleanup to do here in a minute. <laughs> pull it off. And I want the white on top. So we're going to pull the white one off. There we go. And we're just going to, and I'm going to do it on here first so I can pick it up as one piece. Layer it on just to have a little hint. There we go. And then you can use your finger to kind of get rid of some of the little cobwebs because they're kind of stuck in the centers. I didn't do a very good job of cleaning it off. I'll do a better job later, but you get the idea. And then pull this off, which is now a nice little sticker. And then that goes right in the center. So again, you can go either direction with your cards because it's so concentric and go either way. So, and you know, I'm, I'm leaning towards, I love the cool colors because those are my favorite colors, but I know some people really love warm tones or you could do a full rainbow on this. So it's such an easy, fun card to do. It's just stenciling and then letting it dry, but letting the stencil really do all the heavy lifting for you. So that is our second card, playing with some cools and warm tones and just a really pretty concentric stencil. That's our second one. And now we're going to move on to our last one, which this one I only did the two colors. I did the lavender and I did the blue or the purple and the blue. The one that we did together, let's test it. See, this one was such a thin amount of paste. It is dry. Plus, we also used up some more time. So there we go. So let's trim this down. Now, this one, I ended up having to cut some of it off because I wanted to have it ooh, I'm off camera. I wanted to have it matted in that purple. I could also pick a blue. I could pick a, you know, whatever color I want. I've already redone the purple because I was leaning with the colors of the lavender that is on there. So let's trim this guy down too. And because we're going to have a mat, it's the same slimline size. This is already three and a quarter by eight and a quarter. So I got to go by three. This has got to go to three by eight. So trim a little bit to that. And yes, I'm going to end up cutting a little bit of some stuff off. It's okay. It's okay. It's not a big deal. It's just a teeny weeny bit of it. And it doesn't matter what side. I could have trimmed a little bit more off of this one. And maybe I will. Maybe I'll keep a little bit more of the bow. And we'll trim this one down to be three. So that way it's a little more even. So there's that. Trim as much off the bottom here. And there's a lot of room at the top as well because this is a shorter stencil. It's more wide than it is for a slim line. It's more wide than it is short. Go to eight. And I don't cut anything out of the top or bottom. I'm just trimming off a teeny weeny bit of the sides. So it saves quite a bit. And so if I was going to do a different flower, and there's other flower versions of them in jars or in vases, I would definitely pick colors that would match. So if there were sunflowers, I would go with yellows. I would pick colors that would match with the, the type of flower that it is. Then let's just mat this on here. And you could add a sentiment to this if you really wanted to. But I also think that sometimes just letting the card letting the design do the heavy lifting for you. You don't have to put a sentiment on the front. You could put it on the inside of the card and let that do all the hard work for you. And then here is my, my card base. Again, this slimline card is measured out to be eight and a half and then I just cut seven inches, fold it in half, so it makes it three and a half inches wide by seven inches tall. And you could add a pretty little sentiment or you can just leave it as is. So here we have three colors going on, a little bit of some purple in the bow here, or you could just do two tones. So that's what we got going on today. Fun with stencils. So there is our beautiful flower floral one. Here we have our monochromatic, or sorry, our warm and cool toned cards. And then the last one we have is the shifted one 
which is where you take and you ink blend one color and then you shift it over and add a paste on top to give you this really kind of cool, like hidden shadowy below. And then matte whatever color is your shadow as your matte for your card. But just a ton of fun. And don't forget to pull out black. Stencils and mediums look really, really pretty on black. They're absolutely gorgeous. So hopefully I've inspired you guys to pull out some of your stencils or to go check out some of the new ones from Crafters Workshops. They're absolutely awesome. And to play with some of your mediums. The stencil butters are awesome. They're a ton of fun. And there's so much you can do with them. And you can mix them with other pastes and other mediums to give you muted tones or less shiny tones. There's sky's the limit about what you can do. So hopefully I've inspired you guys to play a little bit. And if you did not get a chance, we had a live video last Friday with a company called Art Esprit. We remade some really cool sublimation products. You can still go in and leave a comment on the YouTube or Facebook for your chance to win a bundle from them. So if you've never played with sublimation, it's more, I was using stencils also from Crafters Workshop, but then taking those stencils and putting them on t-shirts and little zipper cases and pillows. And it's just a ton of fun. So if you go leave a comment there, um, all the information is on that video. Just look for Aaron Makes with Art Esprit. It was last one, last Friday. So you guys have until the end of the month to leave that comment. I'll be posting the winner, I believe on the last day, the 31st. So you have a few more days left through next week to leave that comment and your chance to win. So thank you guys so much for joining. Have an amazing, amazing day. Next week, I will be coming back with my card swaps. So it's the final run of my summer card swaps. Um, and so all the rest of the cards that were part of the card swap is going to be in that video. And then I'm going to take a little break. There'll be some recorded videos coming up, but I will take a break from lives for most of July because I'm going out of town. <laughs> Vacation time. But there's some videos still coming your way. They're just all pre-recorded. So thank you guys again. Have an amazing day. And I will see you next Wednesday for more lives. Bye, everybody.